Well, hello folks and welcome back again. Cumberland Outdoorsman here with you on a late February day that's turned out to be pretty nice. We had some rain here recently, but it's going to be a pretty nice day today. It's a little bit cool, but just enjoyable to be in the outdoors. What I've got for you today is a little Marlin Model 60 that I recently purchased. And the reason I bought this one is because I used to own one years ago and somehow it either got sold or someone else borrowed it and didn't return it. It's been many years now. I don't remember what happened. But um, this one here in particular has a feeding issue and it, it jams up. And what I'm going to try and do is duplicate what's happening with this gun and also provide a solution just in case that your gun might be doing the same thing that you'll know what to do to fix that problem. So what I'm going to do is fire a few shots here and see if the problem arises while I'm doing this video. So first of all, guns on safe and go ahead and charge it. Now it's ready to fire. Well, here we go. Okay, there it is. See, that gun is jammed up now. There's a shell in there, and it's not feeding. It didn't pick it up and is not feeding into the chamber. That's not only annoying, but it's also a dangerous situation. So what I did is I ordered some new parts for this gun, and we're going to install them and see if that will fix the problem. Okay, so I've got the action open, and here's what it's doing. See, it's crimping that shell right in the middle. And it's not allowing it to feed into the chamber. There's something wrong either in the loading port or in the loading throat itself. So anyway, like I said, there was, there was something functionally wrong with the gun. Um, what I did is I ordered some new parts for this little rifle and I'm hoping that that will fix the problem and I'm pretty sure it will because I've run into this before. Sometimes cleaning the gun, it, you know, a good thorough cleaning will solve the problem, but that's not the case here. So let me try it one more time, see if it'll happen again. Yep, see, two shots and it's jamming up again. Very frustrating. Put the gun on safe. There's the ejected shell. There. See, it's crimping that case right in the middle. 22 ammunition isn't all that expensive. It used to be during the uh, Great 22 Depression, but I mean, it's still not cheap enough to be able to waste it like that. So what we're going to do is I'm going to. I'm going to break this gun down and show you how to take it apart correctly and safely and install the new parts and then we'll come out and uh, we're going to test fire it again to make sure that the problem is resolved. I also have another older Marlin Model 60 that was loaned to me by a friend of mine and I'll thank him now for that. It's actually a Marlin Model 60 but it's it's actually named a the Revelation, and it was sold by Western Auto at the time. So I'll be featuring that gun too. We're going to take it apart and clean it up and get it in functional condition as well. So let's head back to the den, and we'll take this little rifle apart and see what the problem is. Okay, here we are at my workbench in my den, and uh, what I've got here are the parts that I've ordered. These are all new parts. And I'm suspecting that this loading throat will fix the problem. This is a brand new one that's been updated, and there's no wear on it. Um, also ordered a new mainspring. That's actually a bolt return spring. I've got this loading lever. That's a new one here, and also I've got this new 
uh, ejector spring. The shell actually hits the back of this, the empty, the fired shell, and is ejected out of the out of the uh, loading port. Here's a close-up of one of the jammed shells that we just experienced outside while shooting the rifle. And you can see here there are two gouges in the brass there. And that was done by the bottom of the bolt where it failed to pick up the rim of the cartridge and push it into the chamber. So that, that's a loading issue and that, that's quite common you know, with the Marlin Model 60. But anyway, we're, we're going to fix that. We're going to take care of that problem right now. Um, here is the other rifle that I was talking about that I'm featuring. This is the uh, Marlin Model 60, but it's a, uh, a revelation here. Let me see if I can get a close-up of that. It's printed right there on the barrel. But uh, anyway... This one was sold by Western Auto. And these guns, all these older guns, were made in North Haven, Connecticut at the time. For some time, they were also made in Mayfield, Kentucky. And now they're being produced by Remington Arms in Huntsville, Alabama at a new plant there. So you can still buy the Marlin Model 60 brand new and uh, it's got all these updated parts in it. So first of all what you're going to need are a few tools. You need a good screwdriver set. This is a gunsmith screwdriver set with different types of bits. Do yourself a favor if you're going to work on your own guns make sure you get a good screwdriver set that's intended for working on guns. So first of all we're going to make sure the guns unloaded Actions open. I've already removed the brass magazine tube. Safety first. And there are two bolts that you need to remove here. This is kind of an over the shoulder demonstration. You'll need to remove the front one here and the one in the rear. You can leave this one here where it is because that holds in the trigger housing and trigger mechanism there. So we'll get the properly fitting screwdriver here and take out this front screw. Lay it right next to it because we'll be using that again to reassemble the gun. <clears throat> and then you find the right slotted tip for the smaller screw in the rear. You can buy a whole screwdriver set by the way. I mean you don't have to buy this but this was actually cheaper and it also comes with uh, different size allen head wrenches or allen head set tips and Phillips as well. So we'll set those aside right there where they belong and then the action just pretty much lifts out of the stock. We'll set the stock aside here. Okay, first of all we're going to release the bolt, slide it forward. On these older 22 rifles, older Model 60, here you have two screws that have to be removed. And on the rear you've got a screw and a uh, another bolt that's threaded inside that has to be removed. So we'll take those out next. Okay. And let's see. That's it. Okay. Now we got the right got the right screwdriver. First we'll take these two screws. loose there. Take that out. Incidentally you can remove this too if you want to do a real thorough cleaning. 
because 22 ammunition is inherently dirty and the unburned powder and the uh, also the burnt powder fouling will collect back here and uh, gunk up your gun quite a bit after a lot of shooting. Keep downward pressure here. By the way, uh, another common problem with these Marlin Model 60s is these recoil buffers here. They're made out of a, a rubberized plastic, hard plastic, maybe nylon, I'm not sure. And quite often they'll break and fail. You'll have to replace them, so you have to remove this as well. So this, I'll show you how to do that too. This is not threaded in there. This is just pushed in there. It's under under tension. And it, you'll have to pry it out like that. See, that's what you have. I think these are called like barrel screws, but anyway, that's where that one goes in. And then what you do is you just pretty much just lift it out. And there you have the entire hammer and spring assembly and the loading port assembly all in one there. We're also going to replace this spring here since I've got a, a new one ordered. And the way to remove that is you, you slide the bolt rearward just a bit and then tilt it down. Like that. And then you can remove the charging handle. And then keeping pressure on it, just slide it on out. And there's your whole bolt assembly there. Now this action is stripped down and you can clean inside here. You, know, you can clean it and re-lube it. Set that aside. Get that bolt cleaned up. Firing pin and bolt look like they're in good condition. You can also, you know, while you've got it apart, brush the face of the bolt off, get any powder filing out of it, you know, make sure that both ejector claws are clear and clean. That's where a little bronze brush like that really comes in handy because it gets down into the little cracks and crevices. gets that all cleaned up. Okay, there you can see that that spring, the old spring is pretty much worn out. It's already collapsed and it's it's bent, you know. It would probably still work, but since we've got a new one and they were, all these parts were fairly inexpensive, I'm going to go ahead and replace it. So we'll set that aside. This pin right here, you got to keep up with it. Keep up with all these small parts. Let me zoom in on some of this a little bit. And that pin goes inside this spring and then that feeds into the rear of the receiver and I'll show you how to do that when I put it back together. So we'll go ahead and put the pin in the new spring that way we'll keep up with all the new parts. Now in order to properly disassemble this whole unit here You'll need a paper clip or a piece of wire and Marlin has conveniently provided us with a way of taking the tension off of the hammer spring. There's a little hole right there inside the bottom of that hammer spring strut. What you do is you just feed that wire in there just like that keep tension right here on the hammer with your finger or your thumb and then right here there's in front of the recoil buffer is the release what you want to do is keep your tension on there make sure you keep your wire on the on the hammer spring strut okay try to get a close up 
and by pushing forward you can let the pressure off of your hammer that way. Now everything is captured right there. Now let me do that again. I'm going to go ahead and recock this hammer. That's how that happens. The bolt slides rearwards, pushes this hammer back and cocks it like that. Okay, now it's in the fully cocked position, ready to fire. Do not release the tension on the hammer without putting some pressure on it and bringing it forward with your thumb or your finger. Once again, I'm going to use my scribe to point it out here. Right there, this piece right here, you want to put forward pressure on it. Okay, I'm going to try and do it and show it at the same time. I've got tension on the hammer with my finger pushing down, push in, and just release it like that. Now it's ready to be disassembled. And what we have on these, a lot of these older ones, uh, these older Model 60s, is you've got a series of Eclipse. Two small ones here and one larger one in the rear. Right here. Okay, see that? Those three have to be taken out. They have to be taken off. But first, we're going to release the tension on this loading arm spring here, also the ejector spring, which sits right up here. Part of the ejector spring sits right on top of this loading throat. And as the bolt slides rearward with the empty case, the rim of the case hits that spring right there and kicks the shell out of the action. Okay, we need to get the tension off of that. And the way to do that, you just put your scribe or a small screwdriver right in there between the spring and the loading lever. Now all the tension's off of it. Now the action can be taken apart. Now here's where you really got to exercise a little patience and, and uh, care because these little Eclipse, when you try to pop them off, they'll go flying across the room on you because they are made out of st uh, spring steel. So they'll try to pop loose and, and take off. One thing I didn't mention, by using this paper clip here it holds all this together and it'll it's much easier to reassemble this whole piece by doing that if you take that out that spring is going to continue pushing on this hammer assembly and it, the loading the uh, spring strut will go through that slot there and it's really difficult to get that back in there so just keep that in you know keep that in mind keep that wire on there okay I'm gonna go ahead and take these e-clips out and the way I do it is I put a little bit of pressure down on the clip itself with my finger and I just slide them off just like that no need to let them just pop off and fly away see and lay them down I would recommend a soft cloth like this cotton cloth I've got here that way, you, you know, all the parts will show up well and you can keep up with them and they won't go sliding away. They'll, they'll stay contained there. Okay, that one's off. And then this third one back here. It's the larger one. It'll come off too. <clears throat> and now you just lift this up. lay it aside. I would recommend probably laying it down the way it came off that way you'll keep up with it. And this loading port and the loading throat and everything just lift off just like that. Okay. Um, this is the new loading throat here. By comparison it has been reshaped a little bit on the inside I can see and the dimensions are slightly different. This is supposed to be the upgraded version here. So we're going to be putting that in as well. I'm also going to be replacing 
this spring here. So we'll lay all these three things aside. I could at this time also replace this buffer. I've got a new one here. That's a new recoil buffer I could put it in. Um, but I think I'll just leave this one here. It's still in pretty good condition actually. There's nothing wrong with that one. So we'll save this one for the future. You know, put it aside. Okay, the next step is we're going to go ahead and replace these parts. Try to get a better angle here. First of all, we're going to replace this spring. And that's the proper way to put it in. You want this bent end to go up, okay? Because it'll it'll actually come down and engage this loading lever. The new loading port or loading throat as I call it and I think it's also listed that way when you order it is mounted right to the side here and the difference between this newer one and the older one one of the main differences I see is an extra support pin right here as compared to the old one that doesn't have it. Okay. So we'll lay the old one aside here so we don't get them mixed up. And what I had to do on this plate here to be able to install the new loading throat is drill a hole. Okay, I, I drilled this hole here to accommodate the new one because it's going to mount just like that and those holes have to line up. You could also grind this off but the extra support from that is key in getting good functional reliability out of your gun. So you want to go ahead and put the loading lever into the gun and it goes just like that. Line up all your, your uh, pins with your holes. Make sure to keep the spring out of the way there because it will interfere with the installation of these new parts. So that's the way, that's the way it should look right now. Okay? Because this spring is going to be resting on top of the loading throat right here. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and reinstall this plate. Line up all your pinholes. This is relatively easy if you know if you want to try to do this. If you've got an older gun and you want to restore it, make sure everything is lined up correctly. Don't force anything. If, if you're having to force something, then, then you're doing something wrong. You know, everything should positively line up. You might have to finesse it just a little bit like that. Now everything just popped together very easily. All this stuff should be loose right now, okay? There should be no tension on any of this. I'll go ahead and reinstall these E-clips and once again be careful because they'll they can get away from you, you know. I use a pair of needle nose like this and I put tension on it with the tip of my finger. And just pop them on like that. That way you keep control of it. Same thing here, just keep a little tension on it. That way, you know, if it decides to turn or whatever, it doesn't go flying off, and, it, and they will. And they're nearly impossible to find. I keep extra ones on hand just in case that happens, by the way. <laughs> so anyway, now we're ready to reinstall this spring where it's supposed to go. A good thin pair of needle nose like this comes in very handy. You want to go under the loading lever so that it's engaged just like that. Okay. 
the spring is on the bottom of the loading lever here. And then you've still got a little bit of tension right here. You want to lift this up and slide it into that groove right there to get the proper alignment with your loading throat. Push up and down on this. This should work perfectly. And also, you can go ahead and recock the hammer. Now it's ready to be put back in the gun. Okay, but first of all, we have to reinstall the bolt. So I'm going to clean out this slide up here, just using an old rag. There's, you shouldn't put a whole lot of oil in here. I mean, just one or two drops, maybe, you know, you're not lubricating an engine. You just need a, a slight bit of lubrication, just a fine film. It's really all you need. Because oil, if you have too much of it, will collect dirt and debris and also unburnt powder or burnt powder as well. Just put it in there like that, you know, nice and thin. You don't want to overdo it. That's one drop. You can coat the whole inside of this action with one drop. Okay, the next step is to install in this mainspring. Okay, this little pin right here, this strut that we've kept up with here, slides into the spring. It engages right here in a notch in the rear. Let's see if I can get that under the light here better. Okay, here we go. It engages into this little notch right here. Right there. And then you want to line up the hole at the rear of the bolt with your spring. And then you just want to make sure you keep the spring straight. zoom out on that a little bit okay keep the rear of the spring straight don't kink the spring you know try to keep it see if I can keep it in the camera there this is probably the most difficult part Trying to keep this spring straight because a new one is much stiffer than the old one. Okay, now hold hold some tension on that bolt right there. Slide the charging handle into that slot and then feed it in there. And there you have it. See how that spring stayed nice and straight? That's what you want. We're going to put one drop of oil on that spring because as you fire it, it'll disperse that oil. Really the proper way to install this is you want to slide back a little bit on this charging handle on the bolt and then release it after it pops into place. Because sometimes you can damage this ejector spring if you don't do that. It doesn't happen every time but it, but it can occur. Go ahead and put our screws back in. And uh, 
one thing I, I need to emphasize here is when you're installing, reinstalling these screws, don't tighten them all down, you know, as you're putting them in. Get them down there and get them seated. Seat all your screws before you tighten them. And then when they're all seated, then you can go back and retighten everything. Okay, these, these are not tight. I just put them in. Okay, now we're going to reinstall the rear pin bolt here. Make sure that hole's lined up. It should slide in there just like that. One of the main challenges a lot of people have is just keeping up with their parts as they're doing this. That's why I like to lay down a cotton pad, a cotton rag like this, because that'll keep everything right where you need it. Okay, now we can go ahead and tighten these down. By the way, just snug them down. You know, you're not tightening up a lug nut. You just, it's not necessary to go through all that. Everything fit together perfectly. You know, if you have everything laid out the way you take it apart, it's just a matter of putting it back together in reverse order. Doesn't matter what kind of mechanical device you're working on. The principle is pretty much the same for anything. And this gun was really malfunctioning bad, as you could see earlier. I mean, you couldn't even, you couldn't hardly fire five shots through it without something going wrong and jamming up. So we'll see if this did the trick. Take the camera outside and test fire it again here. And by the way, I was not using earplugs because I was using CCI Quiet, but it was malfunctioning with, with everything. And we're going to try a different, a whole variety of different 22 ammunition in this gun when I load it. And I'll be using some high velocity ammunition as well, so I'll be wearing some earplugs. But it's not really necessary with that the quiet ammunition because the decibels just aren't high enough. So anyway, there it is back together. Now it's time to take it out and test fire it. Okay folks, we're back out here at my 50 yard range and I've got a variety of different 22 ammunition. I was shooting a CCI quiet to begin with because it seemed when I was trying it before that's where it really malfunctioned but I've got a few few of those I'm going to load in but I'm also going to load some high velocity ammunition I've got some CCI mini mag hollow points I've got some Winchester high velocity hollow points and let's see I've got some of this Aguila super maximum so you know if it shoots a, a whole variety of ammunition like that then we can pretty well safely assume that uh, the gun's been repaired properly. So here we go. I have not tested it. This is the test run to begin with. First of all, safety first. Make sure the gun is unloaded and open. Okay? Safety is on. And since I'll be using high velocity ammunition, I'm going to go ahead and wear some earplugs here for those of you that are concerned about my hearing. I guess it would be advisable to use hearing protection with uh, any kind of ammunition, really. But uh, the CCI Quiet is not really not really necessary. In fact, they're quieter than a lot of pellet guns are. So anyway, go ahead and load this gun. Uh, it's got a brass magazine tube here that just slides up, and I'm going to mix these up randomly. Um,
Okay, so here we go. Here's the true test. First shot. That's the Winchester high velocity hollow point. That's the CCI quiet. And that's the mini mags. And the gun's empty. So I think we can safely assume that this little rifle is repaired now. Function flawlessly. So if you have a Marlin Model 60 that's jamming up like that and you want to restore it to proper functional condition, first of all give it a good cleaning and see if that does the trick. And if that doesn't work then you can order those new parts like I did. They're still available online and uh, you know they're readily available for popular models like the Marlin Model 60 and they're relatively inexpensive so these old guns make great hunting rifles for small game and they deserve nothing less than to be in good functional condition okay folks we're back in my den here and I've got this other little Marlin Model 60 apart here and I've already taken the screws out before I started the video to save some time but you can see there, this gun is in serious need of some TLC, okay? That receiver and everything is just full of crud. So we're going to be taking this all apart and uh, also the action here. And there's no need for me to go back into how to take it apart. Once I get it apart, I'm going to show you how to clean it and everything, but... Uh, the, the barrel also has a real fine coat of rust on it, really fine. So I'm going to be taking that off and uh, going over that with some really fine steel wool and some gun oil to try to get the luster back into this steel, into the bluing here. So let me get started with that and uh, I'll be back with you in just a moment. I got this little stainless steel bowl here and soaking all these parts in kerosene. You can use other cleaning solutions like mineral spirits or whatever, but kerosene works pretty good to get this crud loose. You want to brush all these parts, get it all loosened up. Here's the bolt. I mean, this gun has really been neglected. This is years and years of crud that's built up inside the action here. They can cause mal malfunctioning and feeding problems and everything else, loading problems. So we want to get all that stuff out of there and uh, get it all cleaned up and re-lubed back together. I use a soft bristle bronze brush like this. I, don't, I try not to use a steel brush. You can also use an old toothbrush, you know, like this here. You're just trying to get all that stuff off of there, that crud, so the gun can work properly again. So I'm going to let this stuff soak for a little while and uh, set that aside. We also need to pay attention to the barrel here. It's, it's really gunked up and also the back of the receiver needs to be cleaned out. But what I use is a cleaning rod that's coated like this one here. It also has a bearing handle because what that does is as you're feeding the cleaning rod down through the bore, it allows the rod to rotate with the twist of the rifling so that you get in between the lands and the grooves and get all that stuff cleaned out. And the coating actually helps protect the delicate rifling inside the bore and especially at the muzzle. 
you don't want to, you know, destroy the muzzle crown and the delicate rifling there. I use a bronze brush for the bore and also a brass cleaning jag and some good quality gun cleaning patches. And I use Hoppy's number nine. And I use this in just about everything that I own, every firearm that I own. It does a really good job of cleaning and getting all the crud out. And it also leaves a really fine sheen of protective oil, a real thin sheen of oil behind to prevent rust. So that when you're storing your gun, you know, you, you don't have to worry about it rusting. But first of all, I'm going to go over this barrel with some quadruple aught steel wool and uh, very sparingly you want to dip it in your cleaning solution just go over it like that you know yeah, I can already feel a difference just from that little bit that I've done there the rust is already broken loose from the surface. I'm going to go over this whole barrel here and then when I get it all cleaned up I put a real thin sheen of mineral oil on here. Mineral oil you can pick up just about anywhere. It's relatively cheap and it's totally safe to use. I'm going to let that soak for a little while and then I'll be back with you when I get ready to clean the bore. Incidentally, I just wanted to show you the markings here on the barrel. You can see here where it says Revelation. I think the camera is picking that up. Western Auto Supply Company. <laughs> That's something you don't see anymore, folks. So this is an older rifle, older gun that we're going to restore here. But, uh, if you have one of these, remember it's just a Marlin Model 60. And all the parts that fit the other Marlin Model 60s such as uh, the Glenfield Model 60 and the one that I just showed you most of the parts will interchange with these if you need to repair them or replace them so now I'm going to go ahead and uh, clean the inside of this and I'm just going to brush it down with my toothbrush the old toothbrush here get all that cleaned out Kind of a messy job. But I guarantee you the gun's going to work a lot better after we get it cleaned out. What people do, you know, with old 22s like this, they take them out, shoot a box of shells through them at targets and tin cans or whatever. And then they kind of just throw them back in the closet, you know, without properly cleaning them. I mean, they often wonder, well, I wonder why the gun's not working right. You know, because you, you neglected it, you know, you just didn't. It's just like a car, you know, you, you change the oil on your car to keep it run longer. Keep it tuned up, keep good brakes on it, good tires. No matter what you have, the better care you take of it, the longer it's going to last you. Okay, by the way, I, I got that a nice finish back on that barrel there. There's no need in stripping it down and re-bluing it. Um, all the bluing luster came right back out. So now I'm going to go ahead and clean the bore. And what I do is I dip my brush first of all. I take a, a brush and totally saturate it in the Hoppies number nine. You're really supposed to use a muzzle guide on these, a brass muzzle guide if you're going to use a rod. And at the very least use a coated rod made out of steel that maintains its straightness. 
that's what you want. You know, you, you don't want to mess around. So I'll be featuring this in another video too. Uh, this is the muzzle guide. You just feed it on there just like that. Once again, I'm going to dip the brush. And we're going to feed it right down into the bore like that. And you want to hold that muzzle guide centered with the crown of the barrel. And just pull it out. Feed it down and pull it straight back out. Try to hold your rod nice and straight with the bore. The good thing about 22 ammunition is it's coated with lubricant so that when you fire a shell through the bore it actually coats the bore with uh, lubricant which prote actually protects it against rust and corrosion. Whereas in most center fire rifles there is no lubricant and you have to really pay a lot of attention to cleaning those rifles every time you get done shooting. 22 you can let it go for a while. But since this one is so dirty and so crudded up we're going to go through and do a thorough cleaning job here. All right. And next what I do is I put on my brass cleaning jag and I use good quality good quality I mean cleaning patches stay away from the paper ones these are actually made out of cloth they're cotton they're very gentle on delicate rifle bores like on a 22 they do a great job of actually cleaning your barrel <coughs> There's the last patch we passed through there. Still got a little bit on there, but for now I'm going to let it go because I'm going to get out and test fire it as well. That bore is relatively clean. And I want to finish cleaning in here and then reassemble the gun. So I'll be back with you then. Well, okay, folks, uh, I'm back now with this fully reassembled and thoroughly cleaned. Uh, unit here that houses the uh, loading throat, the hammer assembly and spring, the uh, ejection spring and loading lever. And actually in this particular model this spring does not act as an ejector. There's a raised edge here on this loading throat that acts as the ejector. However that spring also is what's responsible for loading each and every cartridge. As the bolt moves forward this comes down around is fed into the loading throat and then pushed up by this lever here that's spring loaded. But I had everything here apart right down to the last little tiny spring here and really got in there and cleaned everything. It's, it's completely clean. So now all I have to do is put it back together. Um, I've got the barreled action also completely cleaned with the bolt and charging handle back in place. Once again, uh, the proper way to do this is to align everything. And this one here, you don't have to open the bolt because the ejector spring is not what, what actually is in place here uh, 
that spring is simply the loading port spring. So we'll go ahead and reinstall all these parts. Get all the screws started. Just start them by hand first. back together and take it out and test fire it. It should work perfectly fine. And I also polished this loading rod, magazine rod. It was completely corroded so I took some fine steel wool and, and went over it and just lightly oiled it. So now I can slide back into the steel tube rather effortlessly here. Everything's working just perfect. That's where you load your shells there. So I'll go ahead and get it put back in the stock and we'll take it out and test fire it. Before I get it all put back together I wanted to cover how to repair one of these screws where someone used the wrong type slot screwdriver and chewed the edges up by slipping out of the slot. So you put the screw into a a good vice, good solid vice, and take a small ball peen hammer and kind of shape it back, restoring the crown of that of that screw there. As you can see, that's all back in place instead of being raised up with sharp edges. I peened it back down. Next you want to restore the slot itself with a thin file like this, okay? We're going to go in here and reshape that. You can also use a hacksaw blade, you know, if, it, if you don't have one of these files. I bought this in a gunsmith set years ago and what it does it makes it gives it a nice straight slot for positive engagement of your screwdriver. Okay. Now we'll straighten it out. I'm going to deepen the channel just a little bit. This is just restoring the old screw so that you don't have to go out and buy another one. I mean you can replace them, buy new ones, but you don't absolutely have to. Next I take a power drill and I'll put the screw into the drill and I'll restore the, the top of it. And the way I do that is I use some sandpaper. First I file it, which I've already done, to try to get all those rough edges off the top. Then I just take a piece of sandpaper like this. So now I want to recolor it so I, what I'll just do is heat blue this one here just the top of it I'm not going to go through the process of, of uh, bluing it with bluing salts I just use a torch like this one here
the heat itself will color the metal and actually act like a uh, oxidized surface to help prevent rust. Uh, you can see it's starting to turn. It's about as much heat as we want. And as you can see, that looks a lot better than it did before. Um, I should have showed a clearer picture of it. But now I can put it back in there in the gun and uh, it's really going to help the appearance of it. In fact, when you do one like this, it makes you want to redo all of them if, if they have any ragged edges on them. But uh, I'll go ahead and reinstall this. That just looks so much better, you know, instead of being all chewed up and ragged. So let's get out to the range and test fire this little rifle and see how well it does. Well, folks, I'm back out here now at my 50 yard target range. I'm going to go ahead and put my earplugs in because I will be firing some high velocity 22 ammo. And I think about 10 rounds would do it. Once again, just to emphasize, bolts open and guns on safe. Okay. Handles released. I couldn't really test fire this gun very well before because the gun was so full of dirt and corrosion that the bolt wouldn't hardly function. But now you can see it's working flawlessly. Okay, now it's loaded, ready to fire. Flip the safety off here and we'll see how well it performs in this test. And empty. That's the way it's supposed to work. So now I'm going to put the scope back on, sight the gun in, and I'll clean the barrel again before I return it. So anyway, thanks to my friend Kurt, I really appreciate you letting me borrow this uh, for this demonstration. And uh, I'll do you the favor of getting the gun cleaned up really well before I return it. So let's get the scope put on, see what kind of accuracy we can get out of this little revelation. Well folks, now that we got these guns pretty well serviced and put back together, I started sighting them in here at 50 yards. I'm going to do a little bit of shooting and I thought you might want to come along and, and watch. So what I've got firsthand is the one that I own is this little Marlin 60 and I went ahead and topped it off with a four power Bushnell custom scope. Uh, this one has the bullet drop compensator so that you can dial it in, you know, for 50, 75, 100 or more yards, whatever you encounter. But uh, I thought it would do well on this little rifle. And I'll be shooting standard velocity out of that gun because that's what I use to squirrel hunt with. And this one here that was loaned to me, this one has a four power Tasco scope on it. And I've been shooting some Winchester Dyna points through it, and it seems to prefer those pretty well, too. So let's go, go ahead and get a few shots off. I've got a couple of steel targets down here, and then some paper targets, too, some uh, stick-on targets. And that's a true 50 yards there, so this will be a good test for both little rifles. Okay, on the bottom there, we have two swinging steel targets. We also have a steel rabbit target there, the blue bunny. And then 
right behind it, I've got some one inch rifle dots that are stuck onto the uh, cardboard there. And you can see the top target has already been shot at. So first I'm gonna shoot my little Marlin here and I'll be using CCI standard velocity. And I'll be aiming at the bottom target of the uh, one inch stick on targets. So here we go. That's five shots. Now I'm going to shoot at that swinging target just below it. And the one next to it. And we'll try that other one again. Looks like I'm shooting a little bit low and to the right. It's consistently hitting low and to the right there. Same with that target. Okay, next up, I'll be shooting the uh, Marlin Revelation rifle. And these are using Winchester high velocity Dyna points. And I'm going to be aiming at the target just above. The second from the bottom on the paper target, one inch rifle dots. Okay, that's five on the paper target. Now the swinging target below it. And the one next to it. And let's shoot at that blue bunny there. See what kind of hit we can make there. I'm gonna go for a headshot. That was perfect. Another one there. And the gun's empty. So let's go see what we have down here. So before I go down range, both guns are open and unloaded. Let's go ahead and put the safeties on even though they're unloaded, but all right, we're good to go. Okay, well, here's the targets. And as I mentioned earlier, the, that my gun there was shooting a little bit to the right there. You can see there's two together, there's two together, and then that one. So it was shooting consistently to the right as it was doing here on this steel target. And here as well. That's a shot from the uh, Revelation and there's three shots on the rabbit's head with that Marlin Model 60 Revelation. That's pretty good accuracy. You can hit a rabbit in the head like that every time at 50 yards. That's pretty good. That's good consistency. This is where I shot earlier. And these are all from with CCI standard velocity. I would say that that gun will shoot a little bit better maybe with a more high definition scope and uh, some better ammunition. 
but uh, it is at least quite consistent so that pretty much does it I just really wanted to see how reliable the guns were and how well they how well they shot and cycled after I did the service jobs on them but that's not bad accuracy that's that's pretty good that's good hunting accuracy for 50 yards on a 22 rifle well folks that pretty much wraps it up for this video regarding the Marlin Model 60. What I was really trying to do is show you that there's a lot of older rifles out there that are still available and they're very inexpensive and you know relatively speaking. So if you have one of these or if you decide to get one and you run into a problem with the feeding issue like we had with this gun and the other one you know I wanted to show you how to take it apart properly clean it and if you have to make repairs like we did with this one. Uh, when I test fired both of these guns they performed flawlessly. I didn't have a single misfire or hang up or anything. You know there was, there was nothing, no issue whatsoever. Now it's just a matter of choosing which ammunition each rifle prefers and get the gun properly sighted in so that we can do some small game hunting with these guns. And uh, you know I think you'll find if you own one of these and, or you decide to get one that you'll be well satisfied with it in terms of a hunting rifle. And that's what they're really intended for, you know, the, the small game hunting. Here, this one here has a, actually has a squirrel imprinted on the stock. And uh, the one that I had before was a Glenfield Model 60 and it had the same insignia imprinted on the stock. And here there were some oak leaves. Um, that's an indicator of what these guns were designed for. You know, they're, they're small game hunting rifles. I mean, there's no reason why you can't get out and plink and have fun with them, but their ultimate purpose is for small game hunting. Well, anyway, in conclusion, what I'd like to say, if you own one of these, it's probably no big secret to you just how dependable and accurate these little rifles can be, especially for the money. I mean, they're they're very cheap, very inexpensive. So get out there and, and enjoy your Marlin Model 60. And if you have a problem, you can always go back to this video and, and address it with the step-by-step -step guide that I've given you. So until next time, remember, if you can get outdoors, go hunting, fishing, shooting, whatever, hiking, I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. And also remember, hit the like button, hit that bell icon and subscribe. That way you'll know when more videos like this will be coming your way. So until next time, my friends, y'all enjoy the great outdoors and have a wonderful day. See ya.